Hello, my name is Lisa, and today we are going to begin a digitizing project using Stitch Artist by Embrilliance. This first video will walk you through setting up the software workspace, opening a graphic to use as a background guide for drawing your objects, and ending with creating an applique shapes. Let's get started. The first thing I want to do is change my measurement setting to metric. I'm more comfortable digitizing in metric because it makes more sense to me. So that is, I'm going to choose that here at the measurement side. The next thing I'm going to do is select the hoop in the correct orientation that I want to use. So I go to my preferences, choose hoops. I'm going to choose my five by seven, which is 130 by 180. And I want to make sure that it's going in the direction that I want to. So when I click apply, it's going up and down. So here is my workspace that is set up the way I, I'm going to start. Now I can go over to the create button, which is part of Stitch Artist. This is what allows me to create embroidery designs. I am in level one for Stitch Artist. And the first thing I want to do is open a background image. I click on this image button and select a, the graphic that I have available on my computer. When I click open, the graphic is placed in the center of my hoop at a default size, and I can now click on it and size it so that it is the size I want to digitize. It's always best to work with the artwork at the size you want it, the finished design to be so that you can set your stitches and stitch length and densities properly. Before I forget, we want to make sure that we save our work so that we can always come back to it at a later date. So when we create our plan for how we want to digitize something, we need to know what order or this design is going to stitch or be layers. When I look at this, I know that the back part of the design will be the box top and bottom and those I want to be applique positions. So when I go to create, I'm going to choose to use my drawing tools. And this first one is the one that allows me to draw with points. So I'm going to select that tool and I have currently selected artwork with no stitches. So I'm just going to be drawing shapes. The shortcuts for the drawing using the mouse and the uh, keyboard are in the manual, but just to let you know, you can simply click to create nodes, which allows you to create shapes. So I simply left click as I go around. I've made three sides of my box. To end this shape and create it, I right click. Now I need to finish it, so I can choose up here the close outline, and this automatically closes the shape for me. So I have a shape drawn. I now need to change it into stitches. I simply go over to my applique function, choose applique, and you can already see that something has begin, begun to happen here. I'm going to click on a node to reshape it because I want it to be a square box. But I noticed that the default settings or the last settings I used were a applique setting with a blanket stitch, and I want this to have a satin stitch. To change the stitch properties, while my object is selected, I click on applique, and it brings up the properties dialog box. Here I can choose the type of finishing stitch I'd like, and I'm going to change this to satin. It also allows me to change the density and the width of the satin stitch. I can have the fabric preview turned on or off. I can choose to have a position and a material stitch as well. Now, most of the time I'm going, I have a fabric cutter, a Cameo and or a brother scan and cut. So I only use one of these. I only use the positioning stitch normally, but if you are going to lay down fabric for the position, or lay down your stitches, place the fabric on top of it, stitch the material stitch to hold that in place, and then trim it, you want to have both of these selected. The color style pull down menu here allows you, the, using the brother PES colors of 
position, and material, that's the traditional. If you choose the keep color, that's for those that want to streamline the process without the machine stopping as often. So if you have a multi-needle machine, that's very handy. And user-defined will automatically switch to that if you change any of your colors in the um, embroidery design to begin with. For example, let's go to the color tab. And if I wanted to change the color of the fabric, I simply click on the position and I can choose a different color for my fabric and it changes the color there. If you notice here, now my applique has the three stops. When I go to the applique, it's set to user defined. That's because I chose a different thread color for my positioning stitch instead of the traditional brother thread color. Now, as far as stitch properties go, there are, depending on your version, and level one has these two buttons here. One is the stitch properties we just talked about. The second is the tie. And you want them, when you have an object that is finished, you want it to lock and tie at the, both the starting and the ending points. So that, that choosing both of these options will allow it to lock and tie at that section. So let's repeat the same steps to create the top of the box. I'm going to choose artwork, my point input option, and I'm going to left click to create the three sides of my shape, right click to end the shape, and I'm going to auto close. If you notice here, this bottom part of it curved it's no longer a straight um, and that is because I was not holding down the shift key when I clicked my four sides as the instructions in the manual will say to create corners or to create the cusps you need to hold down the shift key so I'm going to change them all to corners to do that I'm going to use my lasso and select all four of them they are turning black and I can right click on any one of them and tell them to change it to a line, which turns them all into straight sides so I don't have to worry about anything. All set, nice and square. I can click on my applique and go through my properties again to change the satin stitch, the position, it'll pick up the previous ones that we used and we are good to go. Check back later for the next video in this series. If you subscribe to my blog and YouTube channel, you can be sent notices by email. See you online.